What's up guys, Anthony Vapes. Today here with my review of the Lost Vape Drone Squonking Dual Battery DNA Mod. Uh, disclaimer wise for this, this was sent to me for the purpose of this review from elementvape.com. So I'll throw a link down below to their site and a link to this product where it can be purchased. I don't want to waste too much time on the intro, you guys know that. Let's go ahead and shoot into the up close, show you guys some of the features of it. And then I'll show you the tech testing. Then I'll be back here with my pros, cons, and whether I recommend it or not. All right, so let's take an up close look at the Lost Vape drone. Take a look at the box first. It comes in a box similar to that of the Triad, where it has this rectangular box that's really nice. It says drone. Inside the box, you get your USB cable and you get some manuals. And you're going to get two extra bottles. Now mind you, the bottles are not in the box. The bottles actually are inside the model already. They're in the battery trays. So basically, these bottles are where you'd put your batteries. But they don't actually come, like they come with the box, but they don't come in the box loose like this. It's just a mod and that and your manuals. Really nice. Nice little felt and everything. On the inside, as far as the mod itself. Here's your battery door, here's your squonk bottle. This is where the other bottles came in here and here. You see it will get a little messy inside because it is a squonker, but there is no leaks or anything. This works really well. The battery tray is actually much, much, much improved over that of the um, Triad or the Theron, where it will rip your batteries. This will not rip your batteries. The battery tray is actually super nice and easy to get your batteries in and out. The other thing about this mod is both batteries go in positive side up. So it looks like it's parallel, but it's not. It's series, it's just the way that they wired it up. As far as the bottle goes, you just have a tube that goes into the little nub there. And if you want to see me make a mess, you see it comes out pretty dang easily. It doesn't take a lot to squeeze to get juice to come out. As far as the battery door itself, I do have one minor complaint, and as you'll see, the battery door doesn't seem to fit in very well. It looks like it does, but it really doesn't fit very well. It feels like there's a little bit more room it could squeeze in. As you can see right here, there's a little minor gap. It doesn't have that when the bottle's not there. So it feels like that should have been done a little bit better. I mean, it's not like it's going to come off. It's still secure. It doesn't rattle, but it's just enough to annoy me where you see the little gap there. See on this side, no gap. Other than that, you got a nice sleek stainless finish. It's your typical DNA mod. So I haven't made any adjustments to this. I just do it as the factory sends them before, when I'm doing reviews, and I'll change it later. So this is your basic stuff. The only thing I did, so the only thing I did was I added one profile, which was the 304. Other than that, the rest is the one that comes in. It comes with a nickel, another nickel, stainless 316, a titanium, power, and more nickels. Like there's a ton of nickels and I don't know why they put, you know, one, two, three, four, five nickels, because that was the nickel I took out. Five nickel profiles, <laughs> one titanium, one power, one stainless 316. I do not get that at all from the factory. Like really, I, it's just poor settings. I mean, it's a DNA mod, so it's not a big deal by any means because you'll set it up the way that you want it to be set up anyway. But Five nickel profiles when very few people still use nickel doesn't make sense to me. They should have put in at least all the stainlesses, a 430, 316, a 317, you know, a 304, and one nickel. You know, they could have even thrown in like a knifey or something. But nonetheless, you could change it to whatever you want. And that's about it. I'm not going to go too much into the functions. So let's shoot over to the tech testing, and then we'll be back to my pros, cons, and whether I recommend it. All right, let's take a look on the testing for the Theron 167, which is the DNA 250 chip. At 167 watt settings, at a 0.13 ohms, it topped out at 150. At a 0.15, it was 162, and at a 0.2, it was 165. So overall, pretty accurate, I would say. At the 150 setting, however, it dropped down to 136, being 14 watts off. That's a little bit much for a premium device, in my opinion. But at the 0.15 and 0.2, it was pretty dead accurate, only being 1 to 2 watts off. At 125 watt setting, again, like most mods at the 0.13, it struggles and hit low for 111 watts. However, with the 0.15 and the 0.2, it was very accurate, only being 1 to 2 watts off. At the 100 watt setting, 
at the point 0.13, again, struggling with the low resistance, it was 12 watts off. Still not terrible, but I expected a little bit better. At 0.15 ohms, it was only 4 watts off, and at the point 0.2, it was only 2 watts off. So overall, it is a very accurate device once you're at that 0.15 level or higher. It's only going to be a couple watts off. You know, at worst, it was 5, you know, but most of the time, it's only 1 or 2 off. So pretty accurate at those levels, but once you start dipping between that 0.13 and that lower resistance, you can see it does hit lower and get a little more inaccurate. As far as the max output, I clocked it at 165, so I'll give it to them on the 167. That's only 2 watts short. Not a big deal by any means. And technically it's supposed to be like 166.6. Uh, the batteries I used in this were actually the Sony VTC5A. Since it was only a 167 watt mod, I didn't feel the need to use a higher battery. So let's take a look at some of the limits here. As you can see, the amp limit on this is about 34 amps. So I'll call it 35 to give it a round number, but that's where the amp limit kicks in and says no more amps. And that's why I was only able to put out 150 at the range of a 0.13. For the volt limit, the highest that I had to really go was 5.7, so it, you know, it definitely does around 6 volts. It could do more if I would have tested it with a higher resistance build. But this has been a pretty accurate device. They haven't made any false claims about the chip, so I'm sure whatever they say is the volt limit is the actual volt limit for, for the mod, since it definitely hit its watt limit. So that was a look at the testing of uh, watt mode for the Theron 167. Let's go ahead and shoot into my final thoughts, pros, cons, and whether I recommend it. Alright, now we're back here with the outro. Let's go over some of the pros, cons, and whether I recommend it or not. For those curious, I'm vaping it though on the Azathoth RDA, which I reviewed last week. I'll actually I'll throw a link to the end of it in the video to this RDA review, in case you guys want to see that or missed it. I am vaping a temp control of 455 and 105 watt preheat, the 0.21 ohm build stainless steel coils. Uh, pros. First pro is going to be the temp control performance. Everyone should know by now DNA mods are one of the top three chips for temp control along with the high-end Yihi chips and the FSK chip. Excellent, excellent temp control performance. Next pro is going to be the watt mode performance. It's also a very accurate watt mode mod if you just want to vape watt modes and don't want to use temp control. It's very accurate. <clears throat> Next one is going to be the fact that it is a dual battery 100 plus watt mod squonker. Those really don't exist on the market. <laughs> they, they just don't exist too much. This is one of probably less than five. Actually, I'll go over that a little bit more in a second, but yeah. The fact that it's a dual battery 100 plus watt squonker that also does great temp control makes it fill a really, really needed niche. So, pro for that. Next pro is gonna be, it is 30 millimeter friendly. So, yeah, it's a huge top. I mean, this is a 24 millimeter, I believe, 24, 25, I think it's 24. I you can see there's a ton of room. You can easily fit 30. You could probably almost fit a 40 millimeter atomizer on this. I don't know how many 30 plus squonking atomizers there are. Probably not many, but you could fit them on here and it'll still look good. So that gets a pro for me. Next pro is gonna be the looks. I love the design. I love the brush finish on the stainless. It's very, uh, it's very shiny, it looks very sleek, makes it look very expensive. The rest of it's solid metal. They didn't go with the leather door, which I'm kind of happy with. I mean, the leather on their doors doesn't really feel great anyway. And plus with squonking where it gets messy, I could see people's leather getting ruined. Going with just a solid metal, you know, if you get juice on it, it's easy to just wipe off and clean. So kudos to that, and also the quality of it. This is just a really nice, feels like a really heavy, really solid built mod. There's no issues with anything. Everything's just built really nicely in it. Even the way they centered the 510 pin with the squonky bottle, it just works great. I don't get any leaks on the inside. Squonky mechanism works excellent, so all pros in my book. Let's go over some of the cons. First con is going to be the battery door, like I showed you up close. It doesn't seem like it seats all the way in place when you have the bottle in. When the bottle's not in, it does, but with the bottle in, it seems like it kind of blocks it from being all the way in place. 
Uh, next one's going to be the bottles. They are a little stiff when they start. And actually, I should have listed as a pro before the fact that the bottles are 11 milliliters. So you can fit a ton of juice, 11 milliliter bottles. That's a lot, most squonking bottles are not that big. So that's actually a pro. Uh, but the bottles are very stiff. It takes a little bit to break them in. This one's actually loosened up a bit. I've had this for a little over a month. I've used it a lot. So the bottles are breaking in pretty nicely for me now. But when you first get it, the bottles will be a little bit stiff. And squonky people are very picky about bottles. <laughs> Uh, last con is going to be the price. It is pricey. I think they run for around 130 to 150 bucks. So it is a pricey mod. It's not a cheap mod by any means. So I'm going to throw them the cons. I mean, the prices are what they are, and with the performance of it and the niche it fills, it's worth it. But you know, if people are looking for something under 100 bucks, this is not going to be it. So now, the question is, do I recommend it? I don't like to do hard yes or no's. But before I even go there, I'm going to put this pretty simply. If you're looking for a dual battery, 100 plus watt mod, squonker that does good temp control, there's not another thing on the market for it. Matter of fact, the only dual battery over 100 watt mod I can think of that's on the market is the Kanger one. And it's a Kanger mod. So, I mean, if you were just looking to get into squonking and wanted to try it out, it'd probably be easier to go with the Kanger to see if you'd like it first, but it's not gonna perform anything near as close to this. And I highly doubt the temp control is even decent on it. So, as far as the recommendation goes, this one's going to then lean heavily towards a yes because it is the only mod that does what it does on the market. It's the only one. So I have to give it a yes just for that alone. But other than that, I really do love this mod. If this was to break on me or something, if I did something stupid and broke it, I would go out and buy one right away because this is the mod that actually made me start really enjoying squonking. So yeah, that's what I got for that. Not to mention I could throw a Medusa, which I have a review coming for that soon, and I'll be carrying almost 15 milliliter capacity. Three and a half in the Medusa, 11 here, 14 and a half milliliters I'm carrying on me, which will last me quite a while. It should last me almost half a day. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Feel free to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Like and subscribe. If you have comments, throw it down below. This is going to be my last video of the week. So... You know, I'll have time to catch up on comments. I'll have time to catch up on a lot of stuff. And next week, I'll be back to doing my four or five videos a week. Hopefully, if I get all the stuff sorted out. But at minimum, I'm going to have the Monday and Tuesday ones for sure. So this is, uh, I want to thank Element Vate one more time for sending me this to review. So I got the link down below for them. And I've got a lot of stuff they actually sent me that I'm reviewing, going through. So you'll hear that name come up a lot. And it's definitely appreciated because it makes my life a little bit easier. This is Anthony Vapes as always, keeping it honest. Hopefully you guys can say you're doing the same and I'll catch you on my next review.